striker Funda Venezuela. With a weight of 121 pounds, his record includes 23 wins, only one defeat, 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight making the second defense of his title, please welcome the WBA Junior Featherweight Champion of the World, Antonio. Multicolored trunks, trunks we have ability. He's got a bit, bit of height and fine. I'm Bob Sheridan. With his back to you now, Ortega in the white trunk. Ortega as an uh, win a decision over power and you know, decision in Korea. Second now of round number one for the WBA trunks with the writing on it and the Venezuelan flag on the front feet are continually uh, normal will take advantage of that but uh, a bit. it's a real problem again he steps on his door and that can cause balance problems it really happen more than in slip right now it's Ortega and Ortega trying to get inside the punch that he lacks defense he does John but he's got a powerful left you see him digging with the left hand Nice left hand too again. It's scheduled for two. These guys, Whaler, looking around here. Um, Sermeno fought twice in 1995, defeating 122. And then he defended his title for the This is his first fight in 96. Record of. And the Bellions round. Boom, he nails him in the body. A nice left hook tries to follow it up in the right. Semeno from Miranda in Venezuela and Ortega from Romero in Venezuela. The champ in the blue trunk, the challenger in the white trunk. Grab with that left hand and bang with the right so he doesn't mind when Ortega ties him up with that. He comes from all kinds of angles, does Semeno. He's getting warmed up pretty good now. He's throwing. Uh, you people that are taking this in Spanish and uh, the various Latin countries uh, can understand better than I can actually what's going on in between rounds. But I know that all of you down in the Dominican Republic and certainly in Venezuela are enjoying this and in Argentina, Brazil, and Panama, as well as Colombia. Glad that you can be with us tonight on King Vision. Some pretty good fighters in the United States are not uh, too up on Orlando Canizales. Alfred Cote, Daniel Zaragoza, people of that nature. Hector Acero Sanchez also ranked in the top ten from the Dominican Republic. So it's a pretty good division. Blue Trunks is a world taking on a game South Foreign countryman, Yobert Ortega. Round three, and what I have a dead even fight. I had Semeno winning the first round and Ortega the second round. This one Semeno is uh, much more in control of the third. It's Ortega's willingness to stay right in front of him that is making this a fight. Both guys go to the body, both guys pounding, trying to throw uppercuts. The guy is a one-punch uh, KO artist, a low that Ortega has won have all been via TKO. Ramon Guzman in the fourth round, previous to that, Jose Rincones in the seventh round, and then against Luis Ojeda when he won the Venezuelan 122-pound title in the ninth round of their fight last uh, April. Champ loads up a right hand, but it just grazes past the forehead of the challenger. The challenger in white, the champ in blue. Both guys show good movement. This is a tougher fight for these two individuals than what the crowd appreciates here because they both show a lot of trunk movement in there, make a difficult target for either man to get a flush punch on. You see the way Ortega dips at the waist, bends at the waist when he throws the straight lefts and straight right hands. See that right there? Junior Featherweight Championship of the Ball. Benjamin Yobert Ortega and a fairly even fight to this point. Three and Ortega winning number two. Again in the multicolored trunks, primarily blue. With his white trunks. Nobody's shaking. That. One of the best shots in the fight. Japan. Again, we pointed out earlier the problem with them walking on each other's feet, but that's common with the South Foreign right hand fighter. Almost every circumstance, we have two Southpaws fighting, which you see every once in a while, but it is unusual. Crushing right hand. This is actually Ortega's fight. He'd be better off if he stayed back out and used his, you know, his busy 
take his game plan, the fight plan, as be is to come inside and smother that reach right here. But in this round, he's getting beat to the punch inside. As I say that, he throws some more leather, but it's Semenyo uh, that is uh, really controlling the flow here because Semenyo comes in and out as he wishes. It is his fight plan to fight this guy in junior, and Roberto Semenyo dancing around with it just grazes the nose of the challenger. Ortega stays Ortega. He just stands right in front of you. What he needs to do is try to fight inside with this guy. It's that if he can execute the fight plan, he's got an opportunity here. Longer reach, superior boxing ability, apparently is at this stage, is taking advantage of it. See him counter? Not landing anything, but doing a nice job counting. That time he lands an uppercut and a shot to the face. Ready to sound here. Boom, right there. Look at this. Challenger, you'll be up in Venezuela. Trying to throw the... You know, the book on him was talking about Ortega. He could just outbox Ortega all night out here. Wouldn't make it. Fight him out here, you see? Come in. When he did that right hand is what he's got to do. Slides down, getting the angle a lot. Now he's taking left jab that goes over the shoulder. Wild with the right uppercut. You see guys miss a lot of punches when they're as busy. Those and more important, they have that nice trunk and head movement that uh, avoids a lot of shots. So more head hunting in this round, and Ortega trying to work that may have to do with reach and height. There's the looping left again by Ortega. Ortega digs to the body, back to the body again. Bangs him behind the rib. The uppercut misses by Semenyo. This is a pretty good round. Looking with a shot, he needs to come with an uppercut inside. I didn't hear to come right with that. If he could come with the right hand with his body twisted the way it is, Semenyo wouldn't even see it. And Semenya is so busy off to the left shoulder. Somebody in and come back and see it, but somebody in this corner may see it. It's a lot easier when you're sitting out here to evaluate this than when you're in there to be able to execute it. But it would come from the blind side and it would be very, very effective. And in the white trunks, you'll be at Ortega, South America. A one, or, uh, one three featherweight championship. Ortega continues to come forward. Advantage of it. Keep this guy some. Well, it's a nice scorecard to have him losing the rounds. So he's actually more effective when he fights inside for two or three rounds. That's just uh, forcing the fight. And a fighter cannot fight as they the idea of Mr. Mingo fighting outside. They'd like to see him come inside and make this more of a scrap. Chasing. Antonio Semenyo, the world champion in the United States. But for Latin fighters to come to Miami, it's hardly a foreign country here anymore. The native language is here. And what a great job the Spanish-speaking people have done in this city. They've done a beautiful job. The champion tries to get his man back on the ropes and keep him there, but Ortega wants no part of sitting on the ropes. He waltzes off. And now the champ gets a little bit busier. This is a fairly even round. Tough to score. Kind of the way the fight's been going, you see, just light flows, a lot of missing, nothing too clean. Although that was any arena in the United States, colored trunks for Venezuela, San Emanuel. This isn't what you're crowd pleaser. It's a side and land some body. Corner has told him to fight this guy outside. Rounds two and five, the outside round was just about even. Although Semenyo is close. Out here, the referee doesn't have too Feet don't get tied up. You see colored shoes and trunks. Again, the feet left foot outside. Ortega, everything's okay. You won't have trouble with slipping and tripping. Again, it's Ortega forcing the fight. He's landing body shots here now. Nothing really hurts. Thanks, sneaky right hand that time by Semenyo. But Semenyo, because while he's got mobility and a busy stop, can be necessary for the solid. And we showed you the replay of that one. That was a pretty good right hand that time by Ortega. And he's going to throw more of those. Instead, he goes head hunting with the left. Okay, two more right hands for, with the right hand fighter. You've got to throw it and step up into it. And he digs behind the elbow, back to the ear. Right inside here, too much. This is when Ortega is more effective. See, again, every time he pauses with that right hand, Ortega gets clipped. Now Semenyo lands the right hand. Why with the right hand that time? Back with the left, the uppercut with the right hand. Good, nice spin. Right forward with the shoulder, light left. Round is any different. This 22-pound division. Oh, and the multi.
if they tell it trunks getting away trunks you'll be an ortega need to fight it down need to fight it visibly shaken nobody hurt one heavy blow back two or three rounds ago but it didn't stagger or hurt uh, ortega in any way ortega hits the front semino anybody's fight these guys throw punches do no no unless we get a couple of clean blows in it possesses the When he throws his right hand, keeps his right foot back, and he doesn't move the hip into it. So there's no pull across and no power. When you throw the jab, you're going to push off the hind foot and get it out there, the left out there. And then when you come back with the right hand, you want your hips to roll into it. And other while this guy is a world and teaches great technique. Women that buy his tape, I think, can throw punches out of what these guys are doing because a lot of the it comes from that. But notice when either one of the fighters powering jab that does nothing Semino can come right hook his left hand over and push it down and throw his right there because his hip is back he actually shows pretty good power there both guys landing some pretty good shots Semino probably the cleaner shot class shifting around in his first title defense this is his second one he had a points win over that person, and that's what he's trying to do here. I'll tell you, you know, his rank first. Also, his first fight outside of Venezuela. His one loss was to Nelson Medina in 93, and that one was a close decision. He's a president 122-pound title. He's an aggressive fighter here. He's fighting the champ, and he's a worthy opponent. There's no question about it. He left hook in there that time, and a champion. Champion digs in the body as Ortega comes in on him. You know, I pointed out earlier in the fight, probably do better if he fought out here and used his boxing skills, but believe it or not, he's doing a better job counter-punching the shorter Ortega when he comes in. Semenyo is an inch taller, he's a quarter advantage. 72 to 67, that's a big difference. Continues to make the fight, and that's typical of a lot of inexperienced southpaws. This guy's not an inexperienced fighter. He digs pretty good with the left hand like most southpaws do. But his right hand is in control with any authority. His jab is totally ineffective. Semenyo has been able to come right through it. And even though the crowd likes this a bit more because Ortega's throwing more punches, Semenyo's doing an outstanding job of countering him. You see him in that counter right hand? See Ortega making it? His left hand looks a little tight, and his right hand is non-existent. Semenyo nails him again. Two nice right hands by him. And that's the power hand for the southpaw. Now all he's going to do, push him off, step back, throw the left hook, and nail him with the right hand. And he might be able to get this. I don't care what kind of condition you're in. That hurts. <laughs> Boom, right there. Nice shot there. And well, uh, both fighters fighting their first time in the United States of America. I've got some for winning the last three rounds, seven, eight, and nine. To, uh, the official scoring will be done by Paul Furman, uh, Drutus from uh, Quebec in Montreal, Canada. So he's a Patriot, too. And again, the corner of uh, Semenyo has said, hey, stay back outside, job of countering. The reason why he's so successful countering, he lays it out there to really protect his left side. I just blast away with left hooks about him, and he'll hurt this guy, but he, it's not going to happen. He's going to continue to fight the way his corner is telling him, and it's uh, successful because I'm having a better, but whether it'll be enough to win the judges' scorecards is questionable. You see, he ducks ahead. He throws a lazy right hand. Southpaw, lazy again. The head back of Zemanio, digging back with the left hand. And Semenyo just really, surprisingly, not a good idea to sit on the ropes. He faints to, to his left and then back to his right. And this is where he wants to fight Semenyo, uh, rather Ortega inside. It's definitely where Ortega wants to be. You see, Semenyo takes that step back. He hops back and throws. The other guy continues to throw punches, but they're those pity pat type punches that don't hurt, especially his right hand. He still has power, and he can still damage a guy with a left hand. But it's Semenyo that has more power at this stage of the fight. Semenyo can resort to that jab, hold him off a bit when he wants to. 
digs underneath the armpit, bangs him with a left hook. Challenger comes in, continuing to throw the right hand, but in that time he gets sneaky with the right hand. He throws one, puts it up on top of his shoulder, throws it again. Digging shot by Semenyo. Belen's run 11. This is the 12-round scheduled WBA Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. The 122-pound class, Antonio Semenyo from Venezuela in the multicolored trunks. And that was a slip, as you saw Ortega's foot go back. 23 and 1, 51 and 1, 14 KOs. Two fellas. And I have Semenyo slightly out in front in this fight. 97 been the type of fight where it's been inside, but his corner wants him to fight outside. Let's see how they go here in round 11. Either guy could still win this fight. But it seems that at this stage, Semenyo is stronger. Both guys almost on cruise control. Again, Ortega slips, and there's a lot of pain on the can. His shoe's very wet right now. A slip with the southpaw in Ortega fighting the other guy. Their front feet have been getting tied up, and he wants to be sure that he doesn't call a knockdown when it's truly a slip or, in fact, a trip in this case. Neither fighter has been down. Neither fighter visibly shaken. And pretty good action right now. Both guys showing that they want it. All great champions possess it, and that's hot. And Semenyo is trying to prove that he wants it more. And Ortega wants no part of it. Ortega just keeps throwing punches himself. He's shown times in the fight of uh, great aggressive, slightly more boxing ability. And it's been a pretty tough fight, but haven't been exciting. This is one of the better rounds in the fight. This is round 11 of a scheduled 12-round affair. And the way things are going, every indication would point towards it going the full 12 rounds and Semenyo eking out a victory. Again, the judges, Paul Herman of the United States, Guy Jukas of uh, Quebec and Montreal, Canada, and Marco Torres of Panama. They'll be judging the fight. The arena in Miami, Florida. Two young Venezuelan fighters fighting for world title here. Semenyo in the multicolored trunks of the flag of Venezuela and Ortega white trunks with the flag of Venezuela on his trunk. Ovino, in the closing seconds now, this the 11th round. <laughs> the weight championship of the world, 122 pound division from him. Obviously, for right-handed fighter. And he steps right on his toe, and you see that Semenyo just gave uh, but Semenyo up in his hand that time. He's confident that he's got this fight won. And he, good foot movement, and he's done that throughout the fight. Actually come in, throws his left jab, follows, and he's not getting a clean shot on him. Neither fighter has been down. And both, both possess that immeasurable quality, and that's the heart of a champion. World champion. Ortega had to fight again. Staying back away from the action so he can evaluate again whether it's a slip or actually not in the fight. Ortega continues to come forward, and Semenyo continues to try and counterpunch. He bangs to the body, Ortega to the head. Fight a tough fight for both fighters. Both guys throwing more leather now in the final round than they threw in perhaps any round in the fight. Pretty good action in the 11th round. Both working extremely hard. In that area where a canvas on the paint that's on the canvas here, nice straight light from the left hand comes through. Doesn't hurt Semenyo, but Semenyo felt it all right. You saw the water spray off his head when he got hit by it. And Semenyo just bores forward, and so does Ortega. And this is the way that Ortega's wanted to fight in the closing seconds of the fight now. Both guys finishing and trying to finish strong. Probably won the 12th, but it's too much and too little, I should say. Too late as the bell ends 